A very good morning to you. You're listening to Money FM 89.3. I'm Lin Lee. Welcome to Morning Shot. Now, millions of people across the UK and beyond are preparing to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III in a symbolic ceremony combining a religious service and pageantry, which will be held at Westminster Abbey over the weekend. Now, that's going to involve formality, featuring customs dating back more than 1,000 years. To help us better understand that significance behind it all, we're joined by Kara Owen, British High Commissioner to Singapore. Very good morning. Good morning to you, Cara. Good morning, Lin Lee. Now, let's get right into it. King Charles III was already officially proclaimed the king back in September last year. Could you enlighten us on the difference between that proclamation ceremony and this upcoming coronation? The proclamation happens really quickly after the previous monarch has passed. Uh, and you may remember seeing King Charles going around the country and the proclamation happening. And that's really important for our constitution. Uh, it ensures that we have a uh, head of state uh, and that our constitution continues seamlessly. But it's also quite a solemn occasion happening so quickly after the passing mm. of the previous monarch. The coronation, though, is a major celebration uh, where we are going to be able to celebrate their majesties um, and also um, uh, draw, draw from our own culture, from our own heritage and do something uh, really spectacular to mark the moment. So for those who are interested in the proceedings, can you tell us what are some of the elements to look out for? I think what you'll see is uh, a really interesting mix of ancient traditions and modernity and personal touches uh, from His Majesty the King. Um, everything will start on Friday, uh, where we will start welcoming in uh, the hundreds of foreign dignitaries that are going to be joining us on the day. And then on Saturday, uh, you will see their majesties uh, leaving the palace and being driven in a coach that was created specifically for uh, Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee. They'll go to Westminster Abbey, which has seen the coronation of every monarch since William II. You mentioned these traditions going back more than a thousand years. Uh, so William the Conqueror was crowned there in 1066, and every monarch has uh, been crowned uh, in Westminster Abbey uh, since then. Uh, you'll hear wonderful music. King Charles has created 20, not him himself, 12 new pieces of music um, that will be performed for the first time during the coronation. Songs will happen in English and also in Welsh, uh, a nod to him having been Prince of Wales uh, for so many years before becoming king. Uh, and there'll also be music from gospel choir um, and in a nod to his father, who was born in Corfu uh, in Greece, uh, music from the Greek Orthodox Church. There'll be holy oil that has come specifically from Jerusalem, brought by the Archbishop of Canterbury, which on his majesty's request uh, was made purely from plant-based uh, extracts. Uh, so there's going to be a real mixture of personal touches, spectacle, music, uh, pageantry, parades, and then they'll return to Buckingham Palace in a coach uh, that has been used in every coronation since 1831. Um, I think that will move pretty slowly. It weighs four tons and it's going to be uh, drawn along by eight Windsor Greys, so it'll be going at walking pace, giving a chance to the many, many, many people who will be lining the route to see their majesties after the moment of the coronation. It all sounds really wonderful, Cara. Now, Singapore used to be part of the British colony back in the day, but we've since gained uh, independence for close to 58 years now. So how relevant then is all of this to Singapore? We're really honoured that Singapore is going to be represented by President Halima Jacob and her husband. So she will be part of the ceremony in Westminster Abbey. And there are also other events that are happening around the coronation, including a, an event for Commonwealth heads of state and government and other guests. And I think that's one of the really important ties between the UK and Singapore, um, both the United Kingdom and Singapore really appreciate the family of nations that is the Commonwealth. There's 56 country uh, within the Commonwealth and it will be wonderful to have um, representatives of all of those Commonwealth countries um, with us 
on Saturday to celebrate the coronation. Okay, so also putting into perspective, the late Queen supported hundreds of charitable causes, everything from cancer to women's issues. Now, we know King Charles III is also involved in, in some causes. Should we expect that more of that to happen or what's going to take place now that he's going to be king? And um, what kind of positive effects might that have? or for people in Asia? So uh, King Charles himself has established more than 20 charities and they've covered issues like education, um, uh, business, enterprise, the environment, the built environment and the arts. Uh, so I'm sure all of those passions will continue. I think one of the things King Charles is known for is being um, visionary really on the need to take care of our environment and to tackle climate change. Um, he spoke uh, to leaders who were there at the start of COP26 when it took place in Glasgow and actually he made his first speech. This, is, um, this shows uh, how forward thinking he has been. Um, he made his first speech on the environment in 1970 which was actually before I was even born when he was mm -hmm. talking about plastic pollution uh, in a speech in Wales. But another really important um, thing that has impacted people around the world is the Prince's Trust International, uh, which has helped over 50,000 people around the world uh, to achieve employment opportunities, including here in Asia. So I think all of that work will continue. Um, his passion for the environment, which has become ever more important, how do we take care of our national environment? How do we tackle climate change? How do we live in a more sustainable way on this precious planet of ours. Uh, those are the kind of um, activities and leadership that the King has shown that will continue to touch countries around the world, including in Asia. We are in conversation with Kara Owen, British High Commissioner to Singapore. Kara, of course, Singapore is very familiar with the late Queen who visited three times. King Charles too has visited our little red dot previously. We understand that you've had some personal encounters with both of them. So could we get you to share about your personal moments with them? What struck you? So of course, uh, becoming High Commissioner, I had an audience with Her Late Majesty the Queen. So I went along to Buckingham Palace and was received in the private quarters there. It was a moment of huge honor for me, as you can imagine. But what struck me during that encounter was how deeply she understood Singapore. I had to be really on my toes uh, to make sure that I had all of the information I needed to give her faith that I understood the country I was going to represent it, her uh, in as well as she did. Um, so that was a really lovely moment. Um, with uh, King Charles, I met him when he was Prince of Wales, uh, when he visited France, which was one of my previous postings. Um, and I remember really clearly a moment when he spent time with the staff of the embassy. He did lots of stuff outside the embassy, of course, uh, but the embassy team had just responded to a, we call it going into a crisis response. Uh, there had been a terrorist attack. Uh, in France and the embassy team had been working 24 hours to make sure that any British people who were caught up in that uh, received the help that they needed. So that had been a really big thing that the embassy team had done. And uh, the King, Prince Charles as he was then, spent time with each and every one of us that had been involved, showing huge interest in what we'd done. He was great at connecting personally, not only on what we'd done professionally, but also um, on a really personal level about how challenging it might have been, uh, whether or not we'd looked after ourselves. Um, and I think that is what people who have met uh, the King, they're telling stories in the run up to the coronation. And that seems to come across very frequently, the curiosity that he has for people and the interest he takes in what they are doing. Now, I hear that the British High Commission in Singapore is also joining in the festivities. Uh, so there'll be some events organised in line with the coronation? Yes. Um, so my team and, uh, has been working incredibly hard in getting two big celebrations uh, ready. So tonight we're going to be welcoming 700 people to uh, Eden Hall, which is my official residence here in Singapore. This is where I'm sitting now and you can see some of the preparations behind us, the cocktail tables. Um, that will be a really celebratory event. Uh, it's going to have the feel a bit of a street party, which is one of the ways in which we in the UK love to celebrate major moments. So we're very much looking forward to that. And then on Sunday, we're doing something really special uh, where for the first time, we're going to be opening 
Eden Hall to members of the public uh, with an open house. Um, we've balloted it to anybody who would like to come along and we were overwhelmed by the response. There are about 1,300 slots and they all went within the first 40 minutes of being put up online. Uh, so uh, my team and I will be welcoming everybody to Eden Hall, showing them the art, showing them the beautiful rooms that we have here. And then they'll be able to enjoy some fantastic British food and beverage. So it's a big uh, four days for us at the High Commission and we look forward to seeing loads of people, loads of the community in Singapore to celebrate with us. Money FM 89.3